And so ends a week full of turmoil. You can say that again. Only the Angels hadn't lost to the White Sox. That would have made it perfect. Never underestimate White Sox. They're playing each other again tonight. Should I change the bet? Nope. Hold the line. Okay, let's see what happens. Maybe you're my lucky charm. Have a great weekend, Meredith. Oh, wait. This was your last day. I totally forgot to tell you that they still haven't found someone else for the job. So I guess you can have it if you want. Wow. That sounds quite nice, actually. Of course. And it's a great job. You know what? Think about it, and let me know Monday morning when you return your stuff. I'm gonna run now. Red Sox are playing the Yankees. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's your dad again. How was your time in the mail delivery business? Oh, hi, Dad. Well... Don't take this personally, but I'm glad it's almost over. <laughs> no apologies necessary, Meredith. I'm glad you gave it a try. Yep. And at least now I can finally put faces to your mailman war stories. <laughs> I was hoping I could listen to one of those for once. Oh, hold on, Meredith. Let me guess. Mom wants to talk to me? Hi, Meredith. Sorry to butt in, but I was wondering, are you planning on going back to the city? Hi, Mom. Well, yeah. Steve gave me an offer that's almost impossible to refuse. Partner in the company. Wow, that's great. Although I'm a little worried that you might put work first and everything else second. Don't worry about it, Mom. I'll be all right. Opportunities like these don't come around often. So that's work. Any news about interesting people, perhaps? You know, the interesting, interesting ones? There's not much to say, to be honest. Okay. I shouldn't be so nosy anyways. I'm sure you'll find the right one someday. I hope so too, Mom. Thanks. Just don't settle for a mediocre relationship. That's a never-fail recipe for a lot of wasted years. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me guess. Dad wants to talk to me? Hey, Em. I just wanted to say, don't get on the plane right away when they announce that boarding has started. I mean, why hurry to get in that cramped airplane seat? Thanks, Dad. I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. It's just something that popped in my mind. Uh, have a good flight, Em. Let us know when you've landed. Oh, we're running out of coins again. Gotta go. Take care, Em. Okay. Bye. I hope you don't think I'm a cheapskate for having dinner here. There aren't a lot of other restaurants around, and I'm pretty sure their food isn't better than Moe's. Don't worry about it, Robert. I love it here. Thanks, Meredith. You're such a kind person. Good evening, you two beautiful people. Ready to order? Ladies first. Hi, Maureen. I'll have a salad, please. Excellent choice, Meredith. And what would you like to wash it down with? Hmm. I think I'll have a glass of wine. Gotcha. Robert? The usual for me, Maureen. All right, Robert. T-bone steak and a beer. Doesn't get any more lumberjack than that. Be right back, folks. Ashley, start cutting up the coleslaw and get the steaks out. Maureen's the best. Did you hear about the open mic night she's organizing? Yeah, she only told me about it a dozen times. I wish I could go, especially since I heard that Jack's gonna do a thing. Jack? What's he gonna do? Give a lecture about potatoes? Believe it or not, he's a very good ballet dancer. Jack? Really? <laughs> no, he's into comedy. Would have loved to have heckled him. Oh well, this is a good week anyhow. Must be nice that the apartments are off your mind for a while. 
Alrighty, here are your beverages, folks. I'm afraid the food might take a little longer, as a certain kitchen helper thought the freezer was a good place for storing steaks. <sighs> I really should get one of those microwave ovens to defrost them. You seem a little stressed. Is it the upcoming open mic? Why should I be stressed about that? It's going to be lovely. And you better be there, Robert Harris. Maureen, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. I did not just hear you say that, young man. Oh, by the way, Meredith, I need to steal him for two minutes. He needs to check on some wiring for me. Excuse me, Meredith. This is Maureen's jurisdiction. Have to obey the law. Mmm, that tasted so good. Thanks, Maureen, for the fantastic blueberry pie. You're welcome. It's my way of making up for stealing you away from Meredith. Ooh, I swear. She can give quite the stink eye if she wants, can't you, hon? Oh boy, the world would be boring without her. Speaking of, are you gonna miss your daily delivery round? It depends on who's on the round. Oh, anyone in particular you don't like? It's not right to gossip. So, I won't do that. Ha, huh, you're a better person than me. Oh well, small towns, can't like everyone. Can't avoid them either. Have you always lived in a small town? Yeah, Providence Oaks is my second one. After my divorce, I had to move away from the first one. Everything and everyone reminded me of her. I can imagine that. But maybe I shouldn't bother you with the innermost feelings of a lumberjack. Maybe not. I mean, if you don't want to. Robert and Meredith, sorry to break up your conversation, but we're closing up early tonight. Gotta set up some stuff for the open mic night, and I can't use any peeping eyes. Oh, okay, Maureen. No problem. Let me get the check for you, so I can leave you two to your lovely evening. Can you put it on my tab, Maureen? Anything for you, darling. Thanks, Robert. Don't mention it. You've helped me out so much. This is nothing compared to that. Now let's get going before Maureen gets her broom out. Meredith, thanks again for your help. I'm not sure what would have happened if you hadn't come here for your mail delivery vacation. You're welcome, Robert. I was happy to help you out. A little help goes a long way. Hope to see you around again. You too, Robert. Take care. Good luck with the apartments, and call me if you need help. <laughs> anyway, I love this town. You know I do. So, I'm dedicating my last jokes to specific people here tonight. The first one's for Maureen. A guy walks into a bar, and dozens of slabs of meat are hanging from the ceiling. So he asks the bartender, what's up with the hanging meat up there, man? So the bartender says, ah, oh, you're new here. Well, we like to play a game here. If you can jump up and slap a steak, the house will pay for your drinks all night. However, if you miss, you have to pay everyone else's bar tab. So, wanna give it a go? Nah, says the man. <laughs> Those stakes are too high. <laughs> this one's for our own newcomer, Meredith Weiss. So, a woman's driving down the freeway, but all of a sudden, she hears a local news bulletin warning drivers on the very freeway she's on. They're saying, please be advised of this very dangerous situation of a car going the wrong way. So the woman says to herself, one car? <laughs> Why, there's dozens! <laughs> well, folks, wasn't that 
special. Now, let me know if any of you have any jokes about Jack, you hear? It's an open mic, after all. <laughs> it's actually time for a little break right now. So, come on up to the bar for some of our finest concessions. We'll continue shortly. Mildred, how are you? And how are the cats? Fine, on both counts, dear. Thank you for asking. So, do you like the hair? To be completely honest, it doesn't look all that different. Hmm. To be honest, it feels like a waste anyway, as I can only stay for a few moments. Really? What's the rush? You see, my son decided to drop by, unannounced. And he's staying the whole weekend. Oh, that's wonderful news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, take care, dear. Now, where did he park the car? Yes, it's me, Matt Kearney, in an egg brace. Real funny, huh? Oh, hi, Matt. What happened? Well, I was about to send the final boss, the afterlife, but then the computer crashed. I kicked my foot out in anger and fell from my chair and... Now I'm here, looking like a loser. Ah, oh, poor you. I hope you'll be okay again soon. I hope so. I can't even use my computer right now. Guess who? Jack Burton? Ah, <laughs> oh, now I'm going to be a disappointment. It's just me. Ah, oh, that's a real bummer. So, what have I missed? Eh, not much. Jack just did some comedy. But the final act is supposed to be the real showstopper. At least, that's what Maureen tells me. Really? Well then, I guess I arrived just in time. So, how have you been? Thanks for the note. It was very sweet. I meant every word, babe. So, have you... Hey, Meredith. Hey, Angie. Sorry to pop in like this, but I just wanted to inform you I fixed everything on the RV. She's got a new radio, I replaced some wiring, adjusted windshield wiper speed. The sea turtle is ready to go! <laughs> That's great, Lori. Thanks. I'm sure she's just like new. Well, I wouldn't say that, but you'll see. Gotta go later! An RV? You never told me you had an RV. Well, it's kind of a recent development. You know Mickey and June? The hippie couple? Sure do. They told me it was mine if I wanted it. And I did. Then Lori gave it a checkup. And now I am the proud owner of the sea turtle. Wow, good for you. I'd love a free RV. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Cool. So, where are you going to take it? Wherever the open road takes me. Sounds good to me. A free spirit, the way Mickey and June intended. Can I come? <laughs> well, you are a good kisser. Hmm, there's plenty more where that came from. But at some point, you've got to give me a definite answer. You get that, right? Look alive, folks. It's time for the final act. It's a doozy! <laughs> Saved by the bell, babe. I got stuff to do anyway. Angie, wait! Dear people, none other than our own Kate Evans will perform next. She has been writing songs since she was a little girl. And I cannot say how thrilled I am to host her first performance of hopefully many to come. I am so proud of you, honey. Please put your hands together for Kay, everyone. Drive on, or go left, go right. Suddenly, these choices make me smile. What if I just enjoy the ride? Life's a game of chance for. 
for every break you get you leave another one behind just as long as you keep trying you will get there thank you darling this does not happen a lot but you have left me Speechless! That was K, people! Another round of applause! Well, it's a good thing I didn't leave when Reynolds started his nonsense. This kid can sing. Oh, hi, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, she's awesome. Well, it's good to see someone flourish, but I'd rather be home right now. I don't blame you. Smoking a pipe and reading a proper book is the only acceptable way to spend a Sunday evening in September. Bert, thank you so much for coming. I know you'd rather be somewhere else right now. That's okay, kid. I don't regret it one bit. You did great. But ladies, if you'll excuse me, I'm out of here. Good night, Bert. Thanks again. And now for an announcement. I'm serious, so hush now. Now, you all know that Kay has been working here at the diner for quite a while now. In fact, she was my anchor after Stan left us. And I think the time has come to formally announce right here that I will put your name above the door of this place, honey, where it belongs. Kay's place. Mo Kay's. We haven't settled on a name yet, but... There you go! Another round of applause! And have some drinks with us! That was amazing. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Em. It felt amazing. I was so super nervous, you know? Like, shaking and all that. I'm so glad it went well. Kay's place, huh? Congratulations! That was quite a surprise. Yeah, I told you. Mo asked me like a gazillion times, right? Kind of felt right this time. We haven't hashed out any details, as you might have noticed. <laughs> but it feels good, you know? How did it feel to be up there? Oh, it was so great to be performing again. It felt amazing. I'm all over the place right now. It was such a rush. I will definitely be doing that again. If they let me, of course. That's great. I am so proud of you, Kay. You really have made a great life here. Thanks, Em. I'd like to think so. Big day tomorrow, right? You know what you're going to do? Honestly? Well... Wait, I'm not good at this stuff, so I just want to say it was good to have you back these past weeks, Em. Really good. You just do what you feel you have to do. I'm just glad we reconnected. I promise you'll keep in touch, whatever the outcome, yeah? Of course. And remember, time marches, marches on. on. <laughs> See ya, Kay. Thanks. For everything. My lovely people! The time has come for the open mic part of the evening to end. Ashley was going to do a ventriloquist bit next, but I just heard he hurt his hand back in his cabin. Let me thank you again for joining us, and there's plenty of food and drink to go around. I sure do hope they're keeping things proper in there while I'm taking a breather. So, you had fun? I loved it. Jack was great. Good, good. Honestly, when Jack started telling those jokes, oh, I didn't know whether to suck him one or laugh out loud, you know? Oh, that man is something, all right. And what about Kay, huh? Oh, she was amazing. You said it. Oh, that girl is so talented. Oh, I'd give my big toe to be able to do what she does behind a keyboard. Oh, sheesh. I'm still thinking about your news about handing over the diner. Kay's place, huh? That was quite the bombshell. That's my style. I've mentioned it to Kay, yes, many times since Stan died. 
She probably thought I was joking half the time, honestly. I just want to give her the option. It's hers whenever she wants it. And if she doesn't, that's fine too. Seems like a bold choice to announce it to the town like that, though. Ha! You know me, hon. At least all the options are out in the open now, right? So what's next for you, now that you're handing over the reins? Well, to be honest, I'll probably stick around the diner for now, help out. And maybe I'll try my hand at something different on the side, you know? Maybe fix up some of those cabins in the woods. Rent them out. Never too old to find something new to do. That sounds like a great idea. Doesn't it just? How did things end up with Kay? You could tell me to mind my own, of course. It's just that that girl is like a daughter to me. We talked, yeah. We really reconnected. And I'm happy we did. <laughs> Listen, you're two grown women. And if that's the choice you two ended up on, I can only respect that. Speaking of choices, You've got a big day in the morning, don't you? Know what you're gonna do yet? Stick around? Move back? Honestly, no. No clue at all. Sounds like you're feeling a lot of pressure. I guess I am. <sighs> you know what I've found? Screw clarity. You don't need clarity to make choices. That's a bit direct. I swear. People these days seem to think that because they can calculate and approximate, they can clear up the secret to existence. Like, life's a game you can win or lose. Pretending you know exactly where future you wants to end up, and plotting that out for the rest of your life? <sighs> I'd almost say that's arrogant. Not to mention boring. The beauty is in not knowing, if you ask me. But how do you live your life then? Want to know my advice? You take that one first step and see where it leads you. You can never truly predict the one that comes after. And whatever path you take will come with its ups and downs. There will always be joy. And there will always be regret. But that's something to be thankful for. That's what makes life yours, doesn't it? Thanks, Maureen. It makes sense. You'll be all right, huh? You just keep checking what feels right. And if not, just take that first step, you hear? Maureen? Thanks for everything. I best get back inside. You take care now, Meredith Wise. Take care, Maureen. Good morning, Meredith. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday, I placed a bet on the Angels, just like you said, and won. But they played again yesterday, and I let it ride, and then they lost. They're playing again tonight, and now I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Frank, the pattern is obvious. You're a gambling addict beyond salvation. Ha <laughs> ha, Meredith. I guess you're right, and I guess I don't mind. Speaking of gambling, I bet you're taking the job. And that's not just because you're wearing your coat. I love the coat, Frank. But no, I'm taking it off. I'm leaving Providence Oaks again. Ah, oh, that's not what I was hoping to hear, Meredith. But I understand. What are you going to do? Well, actually, I'm... Uh... The van? So you're staying in the delivery business? No, wait. That's an RV. Yep. I'm getting on it, and I'm not sure where I'll stop. So, I guess this is goodbye. I'm gonna miss you, Frank. Thanks for everything. Try to stay out of trouble, okay? Don't worry, Meredith. I'll be fine. Thanks for everything. Take care and drive safe. Here she is. The sea turtle in all of her glory. Do you like her? I love her, Lori. She's amazing! Yay! Hey, Meredith. I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too, Lori. It was really fun watching that movie and working on the RV with you. Me too. Besides, you'll be back sometime, right? Of course. 
I have to check on my favorite engineer. You mean me? Ha! I'd love that. Safe travels, Meredith. Thank you, Lori. See you around. Guess who? Is it the person who makes the same annoying joke twice in a row? It's me, Angie Eastman. You know, I thought it'd be easier to guess the second time around. So, this is the RV, huh? Yeah, she may not look like much, but she'll get the job done. It's perfect. So, where are we going first? <laughs> yeah, about that. Hmm? I would really, seriously, definitely like you to go with me. Wow, you've got me speechless. Again. <laughs> Don't be too flattered. It's just, there's a dodgy TV in there with a VCR attached, and I need someone to feed it a steady diet of movies. <laughs> I'm your gal. So you probably have to go pack, right? Well, there it is. It's not much, just some clothes, some toiletries and trinkets, and seven shoeboxes filled with videotapes. So yeah, I'm all packed. Wait, you knew I'd ask you to come with me? Well, I had a hunch. Plus, I was prepping to leave P.O. anyway, right? So I just stepped things up a bit. Anyway, give me the keys. I've heard about your driving. What? What have you heard? From who? People talk. When advertising exec David Howard, parentheses Albert Brooks, is passed over for a promotion and subsequently fired, he decides to change his whole life. He convinces his wife Linda, parentheses Monica Johnson, to sell their house and roam the country easy rider style in a Winnebago. Okay, forget this one. That's just not going to be relatable at all. <laughs> nope, we've got nothing in common with those guys. I have another flick where a bunch of academics set up a ghost hunting business in an old fire station. That should be way more accessible. Angie Eastman, have you seen every single tape in here? Not all of them, but most. Come on! But I don't mind watching them again. In fact, I'd love to see them with someone who... Knows nothing about movies? I was going to put it a little nicer than that. Someone who has unspoilt virgin eyes. Virgin eyes? What are you, a poet now? <laughs> All right, well, Lost in America will unspool before these virgin eyes soon enough. Tell me about Stand By Me. It's about four kids from Oregon, right? Sorry for button in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from our very own K. Evans. 